While prison riots are portrayed throughout the media on a consistent basis, sometimes these riots are much crazier than anything that could be portrayed in a movie or a television show. Some of these riots were known for their extensive news coverage, cultural impact, and sometimes even the gruesome acts committed during these riots. So that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So here are the five most insane prison riots in history. This was the most violent prison riot in American history to date, and it started with a little too much booze. The New Mexico State Penitentiary at the time was overcrowded, and 200 inmates didn't have a bed or a cell. There were also frequent viruses that spread between the inmates, lack of medical care, and poor quality food infested with rat feces. When the prison cut the educational and recreational programs, prisoners had to be on lockdown for long periods of time. At one point during this period, a visiting warden from another prison called it the filthiest prison he had ever seen. Due to policies in the prison on snitching, there was a high increase of inmate-on-inmate -inmate violence, as officers would heavily interrogate inmates, but did little to protect them after the information was given up. Smaller riots broke out from time to time, but nothing was done to prevent the largest prison riot from occurring. In the early hours of February 2nd, 1980, there was a surplus of hooch, or prison-made liquor, being distributed among the prisoners. One prisoner had overheard a plan to jump a guard, and got the idea to take hostages. This idea quickly spread spread and the prisoners began taking the hostages and locking them in a room. As the night went on, more hostages were taken and the riot began. When the riot went on, there was little prisoner solidarity. Once the prisoners found a way to open cell block 4, which housed those convicted of sex crimes and the mentally ill, violence broke out. Many were killed with tools, pipes, and one was even burned alive in a window and could be seen from the outside by a BBC reporter. One of the most disturbing parts of this riot is that there was a back door to this cell block, which was accessible from the outside. Most of the prisoners begged the officers on the outside to be saved, but the officers chose to do nothing. The riot continued and prisoners set fire to the Protestant chapel, the psychology wing, and the records office. Negotiations began, but there are no records of what was said. On Sunday afternoon of February 3rd, heavily armed police entered the prison and order was restored. In the end, 33 inmates were killed, or had overdosed, and hundreds were injured with some having serious injuries. Those who had overdosed found drugs in the psych ward during the riot. No guards were killed, although some were injured. Inmates dressed several guards up as inmates and snuck them out of the prison, while some injured guards were returned to the officers on the outside so that no guards would die in the inmates' custody. After the riot, several inmates were prosecuted for their roles in the violence, but according to Roger Morris, an author who investigated this riot, almost nobody faced punishment for their crimes committed during this riot. This prison, once located in Afghanistan, was the site of a major prison riot in 2001, shortly after the United States invaded. Just two months after 9-11, the United States set up a prison camp to detain Taliban operatives and gather intelligence to prevent further terrorist attacks, while a CIA officer and a translator were interrogating an American who joined the Taliban prior to 9-11, several prisoners began to riot. Using concealed grenades, they attacked the prison guards and the CIA operative in a suicidal manner. Overpowered, the prisoners were able to overtake the prison. The CIA officer Johnny Mike Spann was killed. He was the only American casualty in the riot, and was the first US serviceman to be killed in Afghanistan. He was named a hero as he had the chance to run, but instead stayed and fought off the attackers until he was out of bullets, and then began using hand-to-hand -hand combat until he was overpowered. He did this so that other operatives could retreat without being chased. The prison riot was named a battle and marked the beginning of a long war in the Middle East. Overall, the riot lasted six days. When reinforcements arrived, over 300 prisoners were killed and 86 were recaptured. This battle wasn't without controversy though. When American soldiers arrived and were investigating, they found that overwhelming force was used and that a number of prisoners were killed with their hands tied behind their backs. Several Afghani militia forces and foreign-led coalitions were accused of breaking Geneva Convention codes. 
This was one of the most influential prison riots in history as the prisoners actually made changes and got their demands met. This riot began in 1990 at Strange Ways Prison, Manchester, when the complaints of prisoners were being ignored. This prison was originally made to house 970 inmates, but was currently housing over 1,600, with 100 of those inmates added just a month prior to the riot. Prisoners were beginning to feel the effects of overcrowding. This prison also didn't have toilets, and prisoners had to go in buckets in their cells. Most prisoners were only allowed out for one hour a day to empty their buckets, and there was little time for recreation or educational programs. So, on the 1st of April, 1990, a riot began in the prison chapel when a prisoner took the microphone from the preacher and instructed hostages to be taken. Officers tried to escape, but some were captured. The inmates began to take over the prison, and began to free prisoners who were still locked in their cells. As they made their way to the protective custody units, some prisoners attacked those who had committed sex crimes. By day three of the riot, over 800 prisoners surrendered and were transferred to other prisons. However, the riot was far from over. Prisoners who refused to surrender went to the rooftop to make their voices heard. These prisoners had basic demands, such as an end to the 23-hour lockup, and longer exercise periods, as well as access to toilets. For 23 long days, these prisoners continued to protest on the roof. Officers began to enter the prison and use force to remove them, and slowly but surely began removing prisoners until just five were left. One of them was a 17-year-old who had suffered the brutal conditions of the prison for joyriding. The riot concluded when the last prisoners were removed from the roof and the officers restored order. This riot led to the Wolf Report which created justice reform all across the UK and provided proper sanitary conditions. The media originally reported that between 11 and 20 people were killed in the riots. In response, a banner was hung up saying no killed during the riot. In actuality, around 200 people were injured, and there was one death reported, but there were claims that this prisoner had a pre-existing condition which was the cause of death. The riot lasted 25 days, and it is the longest prison riot in British history. Why? Negotiations to end the siege at Strangeways Jail in Manchester are said to have reached a critical point. The prison governor says the number of prisoners still holding out inside the jail is less than 25. Up to 21 inmates have been spotted on the roof over the past day or so. In the small hours of the seventh day, a squad of prison officers suddenly adopted heavier tactics. Marching across a courtyard, they chanted rapist and beast beast to the prisoners above. Verbal provocation seemed at odds with the governor's stated aim of a negotiated settlement. He later called the incident an error of judgment. That is not part of our official tactics, but as I've said to you before, there are very substantial difficulties in ensuring that staff are fully briefed, in ensuring that they all know exactly what we're up to, and that the situation is totally carefully controlled. Up on the roof, a solitary prisoner entered into a long argument with a prison officer on the ground. The prisoner said that at the end of the day, he'd been forced to take action. For much of today, while the barrage of police sirens has been repeated, there was little sign of most of the rooftop protesters. The governor estimates that fewer than 25 are either holding out or missing, possibly dead. Reporters have counted up to 21 men moving about on the roof in the last 24 hours. While many riots start because inmates are fed up with poor prison conditions, this one strangely started with the fact that the prison wanted to make conditions better to prevent disease. In 1993, Ohio began giving inmates tuberculosis vaccinations in prison to prevent the disease from spreading into the building, something which had been common before. However, the vaccines contained phenol, which is an alcohol-based substance. So some of the Muslim prisoners objected to the vaccine since they don't consume alcohol. A riot subsequently began, and several inmates who were labeled as informants were beaten to death. This riot also united three prison gangs, 
the Gangster Disciples, the Black Muslims, and the Aryan Brotherhood. A very unlikely alliance. They worked together to riot and met daily in their own form of a leadership council. In the end, nine prisoners and one guard died over an 11-day period. This was the longest prison riot in US history. Five prisoners were branded as leaders of the riot and were sentenced to death, and they are all still alive, currently on death row, awaiting execution. Only one execution date has been scheduled for 2023, 30 years after the riot occurred. While this riot didn't have much of a political impact, it is considered one of the most insane prison riots in history. It started with a man named Jerry Miles, who was 44 years old at the time and was a former Alcatraz inmate during the riots there in 1946. Because Montana didn't have an adequate background check system, he was placed in the general population where he fell in love with Lee Smart, a 19-year-old traveling salesman who was convicted of second-degree murder two years earlier. He committed the murder with a pair of pliers and broke out of his previous prison. He was a troublemaker in this jail, strangely due to the fact that he preferred his ducktail haircut to the mandatory prison buzz cut. Because he was young and small, he hired a man named George Alton, another prisoner, to be his guard for $10,000 a month, worth about $89,000 today. Alton became the third leader of the riot. The riot was premeditated and was originally planned to be a diversion for escape. It began when the three overpowered a guard by setting him on fire and getting his keys and rifle before putting him in a solitary cell. At this time, other inmates began overpowering the other guards using knives and got their keys as well. They began to stealthily take other guards hostage and lead them to solitary confinement. They eventually killed the warden, took hostages, and began setting fires as a diversion while they tried to tunnel through the walls. While this riot was well planned, they did not realize how difficult it would be to tunnel through concrete, and because of this, they never escaped. 36 hours later, the riot ended, but it did not end peacefully. The Montana National Guard overtook the prison using extreme force. A serviceman had access to a bazooka, which he repeatedly fired at the prison, aiming at the location of the instigators. Another serviceman repeatedly fired a fully automatic rifle, and others bombarded the prison with tear gas. As policemen stormed the prison, some were shot, but made their way to Jerry Miles and his 19-year-old lover, only to discover that they had been killed in a murder-suicide. And that is it for this video. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed. I try to make a similar video like this every week, so if you want to subscribe for that, you can. I'll leave my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all of which are deburke321, down below if you want to go check those out. But like I said, that's all for now. As always, until next time.